Welcome to this video. Uh, we're going to be using Unreal Engine 5 and uh, Blender 3 to uh, create a HDR uh, environment cube map from Unreal. And we're going to use that HDR um, image in Blender uh, as an environment texture uh, for the world so that we can actually light the scene as though it was um, a scene from the Unreal Engine project, but it'll actually be in Blender so that we can use all of Blender's modeling tools. I've already preloaded um, a brand new first person project. Um, I've also added the uh, Infinity Blade Icelands. Uh, this is just a package provided by Epic to uh, provide a scene for me to, uh, to capture the cube map. So first thing we're going to do is go to Infinity Blade Iceland and then choose maps and then we're going to click on the frozen cove level we'll just let everything build here so this is going to be um, our scene that we're going to capture as you can see it's quite a nice um, detailed scene so what we'll do is we'll just press G to get rid of all the uh, little icons. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, um, in Unreal Engine 5, you um, don't get the Place Actors window by default. So what we're going to do is go to Window and then uh, choose Place Actors. This is very much like Unreal Engine 4 then. And then we're just going to search the uh, classes for Cube. And then we'll have a scene capture cube. So we'll just drag that into the scene. Press G again so we can actually see the camera. Position the uh, camera wherever you like so that you can capture whatever you want in your particular scene. And then this um, scene capture cube requires a texture target to write out to. So in the details panel on the right hand side, is waiting for that uh, new new uh, texture target. So what we can do is um, go to the pull down box and then choose create new asset cube render target. And then we specify where we want to place that asset. I've already created a game folder inside the content folder, but you create whatever folder you want. So I'll choose that. We'll give it a, give it a name. So if we open that up, we can uh, see the size of the texture. And at the moment it is uh, 256 pixels. So let's set that to uh, 2048. And then uh, we want to make sure HDR is checked. And we'll set the um, compression settings to HDR. So now we can actually move the camera. And that'll get it to rewrite out the texture. And then the other thing we want to make sure of is in the capture source, we'll set it to final color HDR in Lanier sRGB Gamut. So this will write out a HDR texture in Lanier sRGB color space. If we move it again, make sure we've got the newest image. And then now we can just right click that and say create static texture. So now here's our static texture. And then we say right click that. And go to asset actions and then export and then just choose a folder on your computer where to uh, save that hdr image which uh, i'll switch over to blender now and show you how to set up blender so here we are in blender 3 what we want to do is locate um, or create a new uh, panel which is the uh, shader editor window so if we go to the bottom right hand side um, get this little cross uh, cursor and then drag it up then we can actually create a new panel and at the top left hand side we can select what kind of panel this is which if we choose shader editor then now we can actually see the material that is applied to the cube and what we want to do is switch the mode from object to world so this is the shader that is used to actually uh, light the scene 
and if we switch to rendered mode at the top right hand side which we are uh, lighting the scene from the scene world then at the moment it has no no image so inside of the shader area we can click on add and then we need to uh, locate the texture and we actually want an environment texture so then we're actually going to choose open and then go and load in the newly created HDR texture from Unreal. So now that that image is uh, loaded in, we um, set the uh, settings to acquire rectangular uh, with a single image um, and set the color space to linear. So then what we want to do is provide some mapping uh, coordinates to uh, this texture. So, so if we choose add and then we go to input texture coordinate and then we're going to use the generated coordinates here and we're going to place them inside of a mapping node so we choose add again and then go to vector mapping and then we provide the generated uv coordinates into the vector input make sure the type is on point and then we'll provide that output to the vector input of the texture and then we'll provide that color into the background color so now in the scene you can see that your texture is now um, displayed and you're free to uh, modify the sequence um, sequences of the nodes that you can actually tint it with uh, brightness and contrast things like that so you could always you can always drag that over and then choose uh, add color brightness and contrast and then you can just change the uh, the contrast slightly And you can also uh, strengthen the color by choosing the uh, on the background node you can change the strength there that's just how bright it is so then what we can do is we can add in a, uh, a mesh you can actually um, just continue to model now uh, so if we just create some sort of shape And we can uh, add in a subdivision surface modifier. Change the smoothing to shade smooth. And then now if we switch back to the objects material, which it doesn't have on at the moment. So we'll go and create a new material. Um, so this then if we just set the metallic to be quite high and the roughness to be quite low so that we can actually see um, we can actually see the the environment texture lighting the object so the idea is that you're now able to model um, whatever it is you want uh, but at least you're modeling it in an environment that's that it's actually going to be placed in with correct lighting so uh, thank you for joining me for this video um, and i'll see you in the next one